Hey guys, it is, what day is it? Tuesday. It's Tuesday night and I thought I'd kind of just do a little update vlog. I am behind with vlogging because this week's been a bit, oh, I keep getting texts. Because this week's been a bit stressful. I actually filmed a vlog, um, Oh my goodness, why do people keep texting me? I actually filmed a vlog which I was going to put up, kind of explaining everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I actually filmed a vlog explaining everything, but honestly, I was such an emotional wreck in that vlog that I've decided not to put it up. It was basically me just crying and crying and hardly talking, so I thought that I would gather myself, take a few days to get a bit happier and update you now. So the last vlog from me you will have seen was yesterday's, which was filmed on Sunday, and that was the day that I got the really bad news that my nan had passed away. I'm trying to do this video without crying because I've literally spent the last three days just crying and I don't want to just cry through this again like my last one that I got rid of. So if you think I don't seem emotional or sad it's just because I want to talk and then I'll probably go off and cry after this. I actually have been hugging my cheese box for the last half an hour and I genuinely have no idea why. That was actually a lie. I put it in a video and then I just started hugging it and I'd been hugging it for half an hour before I knew what was happening. <laughs> but back to what I had to say. On Sunday, my nan passed away and I was very, 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 very close to her. She was like a second mum to me. She actually had been unwell for years and years. She had like three or two, three heart attacks. I'm not too sure, I was really young, 10 years ago, and doctors gave her 24 hours to live and she made it 10 years. So like, she's a very, very, very strong lady. She went blind, had diabetes, had kidney failure, had heart failure and she lived with it for 10 years and managed to live a really, really good life with everything as well. As I said in previous vlog, I was her carer for a while. Um, so we really, really bonded. And I used to just love going around and hearing all of her little stories about things that she would get up to when she was younger and about her family and what it was like when she was a young girl and like how different things are now and stuff. So we had a really strong relationship. We used to go out for dinner, take her out, take her shopping. And despite being basically fully blind and with all the other problems that she'd had for years, she lived a really nice life until I'd say Valentine's Day this year where she had a stroke. The stroke took her speech, so you would talk to her, but you literally would not know what she was talking about. I, I had a video that she found so funny. She was laughing at herself and she just found it so funny. Basically, she couldn't say banana and we were like, we'd hold a banana up and we'd be like, Nan, what's this then? And she'd go, Nabada, Nabadi, Nabadu. <laughs> And she'd just start saying all these words, but she found it so funny. She'd just sit and laugh at herself. So it wasn't like us taking the mickey out of her or anything. She was finding it really funny. But yeah, after her stroke, she was kind of okay. It had just taken her speech and her memory a little bit. But other than that, she was still okay. But then the more time she spent in hospital, the more poorly she got and her kidneys started to fail and... She kept getting water infections and she kept just, she kept getting so much wrong with her. She was given a few hours to live four times, three or four times, and she pulled through it every time, which was 
insane that is how strong she was but she was in the hospital for months what is it now september february march april may june july august she was in the hospital for like six months or five months and then they said it was okay for her to go but she was in a state where she needed constant care and i wasn't capable of that my family weren't capable of that and she was a person who never wanted strangers um, into her house because obviously being blind they could take things and we just weren't comfortable with that either so she ended up going in a home where she was looked after there and we went round basically every single day to see her anyway but she was in the home for a month or two actually I don't know how long she was in there for but she seemed to be getting better than she was in hospital. And then it came to the time where I was moving and she was at like a, an all time high that she'd been at for a few weeks. And it was like, whoa, where did this come from? Because she was so low when she was in hospital. And then she'd kind of gone semi back to being normal nan other than a speech still. So I moved here and literally the week after I moved, she hit rock bottom again. She went really, really bad, like she was in hospital. And it's just so strange to me. It's like she waited until I was gone. And I know that sounds silly, but that's what it's like because of how good she was for a few weeks. And then the week after I've moved, she hit rock bottom again. And then she had a fall and hit her head I think I don't really know too many details because this was on Sunday um I don't really know everything that went on because I wasn't there but when I found out that she was ill I was planning on going back to see her I had some work to finish off here but then on Tuesday, which is today when I'm filming this, I was gonna go back to Sheffield to see her. I found out that she wasn't very well, by the way, on Sunday morning, and she passed away on Sunday afternoon. So if I went straight away, I wouldn't have made it in time anyway because it's a five hour trip. But I always said that the one thing that I was gonna do was be there for my nan because I wasn't for my granddad. And, oh God, I said I wouldn't cry. That is my biggest regret in life, not saying bye to my granddad because he meant so much to me. And I didn't get to say bye to him because I was too scared to go and see him because one of my biggest fears is death. And I was too scared to go and see him, but I, I'd said all the way through after my granddad died that I was gonna be there for my nan and I wasn't there. I don't know, I just feel like I've failed her a bit. My brother was there with her and my auntie Sue was there with her. I am not gonna cry in this video. Anyway, I thought that I couldn't upload the vlog that I filmed. Honestly, I was just a wreck. And I don't think that it was very pleasant for anybody to have to sit and watch that. So I thought that I would just get myself together when I was a little bit more jolly and just film a little catch up about what had happened just to let you guys know because I've had so many supportive messages on my last vlog where I said that she wasn't very well. There were so many, so many supportive messages on that vlog and I appreciate it more than anything. You guys honestly are the nicest people and I appreciate you so, so, so much. So thank you for being so nice. Yeah, I just wanted to do a little catch up and just let you know and I will be back to vlogging now. I've had three days of not vlogging and to be honest, I kind of miss it. I feel like when I stop doing things, that's when I start to think about things. So I just need to keep busy and I've managed to keep busy over the last few days so that's been quite good. I will be going back to Sheffield for her funeral. That'll probably be in a couple of weeks so obviously I won't be vlogging that week. But yeah, thank you again for being so nice. I appreciate it so much. I just want to hug you all. Remember to spend time with the people that matter the most to you and 
I will see you tomorrow with another vlog. Bye.